Hello and welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with is Dan Malott. So Dan, can we start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Michael. It's my, uh, my pleasure to be here. I, I'm, I'm honored that uh, you asked me to be here. So uh, yeah, I, um, I am year 30 in education, 18 years as a teacher teaching Spanish, another uh, 11 going on my 12th year in um, administration. I uh, began my uh, administrative path by, uh, by changing the way we uh, looked at summer school by moving it online. And ever since then, I became the, uh, the person who runs online programs and finds new ways to educate students and meet them where they are. So I created a virtual academy in our town, in our, in our school. And um, I also run a building that runs from 8 a.m. to 8.30 at night, which uh, runs kids uh, through online programming, but with teachers on site supporting them. So that's our way of doing not just uh, the online piece, but some of that, those hybrid pieces where kids need more support. And I also, that's my building leadership role as a district leader. I help lead our school in uh, working with uh, our administration and community to build our Life Ready graduate profile and to link those to competencies and uh, make sure our learning targets lead to transferable learning to, uh, competencies that we can use once kids get out of school. All right. So as a school leader, for over a decade now you've began and ended a number of school years and after you do one or two you get into a rhythm with them but this year we've sort of had a real disruption in our school year that's going to make ending the school year and starting the next one a little bit different what advice would you give for school leaders on how they can sort of accommodate some of what's happened over the past couple of months sure um to be clear, I've, I've made a, a habit in my position of not getting into too many patterns. I uh, actually told my superintendent one time that I rhythmically disrupt the environment. So every time they get comfortable, my job is to make them less comfortable. And obviously, this situation has uh, done my work for me in uh, at scale. So um, I think that would be my first advice um, is to take this opportunity as we're going to get back into things. You have, we have an opportunity at the end of this year, at this moment right now, to do what we haven't necessarily done unbelievably well in education, I'd say in public ed where we're at, which is you know create something, assess how we're doing against it, adapt it, and then repeat that cycle. We're at a moment now where at, as we're gonna close out the year in a few weeks, you know, if, if we have a chance to uh, get teachers to look at what they created, which they created on the spot magnificently, I mean, I realize it's got lots of flaws, but there's the work they did has been magnificent. And but now, if we can get them to assess, which is you know one of the things I lead right now within our school, I'm to figure out how to get them to assess what they're doing, um, and then adjust it based on that assessment. Then uh, that's how we want to start the next school year. Um, and and I, I think one of the things we want to keep aiming uh, in that in that order is um, don't assume that we're going back to cyber next year. But the tenets of cyber are good cyber are the same as the tenets of good instruction in the classroom. Um, I personally, and we're working to get the UDL framework out in front of everybody, because if we follow those really, good, good things will happen. Um, we also wanna look at, you know, what does good student engagement look like? Did you, and, and this all begins that, that assessment piece. Uh, we've had our teachers uh, ask students these questions. What was effective? What did you like about what we did? Meaning like, meaning what helped you learn what the topic we're trying to cover? How long did it take you? That's been a big piece of it for us, the, the amount of time it was taken. So um, with those reflections, um, we're asking teachers now to do those. In fact, we have one tomorrow or next week where they're going to go in. They've already asked, they've asked the students what to do. Now they're going to reflect on what they have done. Those reflections are going to turn into preparations once the kids leave the school district, meaning at the end of this year, our last day after that, we have three days to work with teachers and say, okay, this is what you said you learned both from the student and your perspective. Now, how are we rebuilding this? Not only if we go online, prepare for that, but if you don't go online, if we're face-to-face, -face, what standard operating procedures have you changed? What was, what was impactful from your perspective and their perspective in engagement? And so build from there. So I can only say the advice I, I would offer is assess now, have your teachers assess the students, meaning, and I don't mean the typical assessment, as in how did I do? What is my coursework? How has this impacted you? Um, and then assess, do that self-assessment, share with colleagues 
make sure we put those collaboration times, use those Zoom meetings and the Zoom and the Zoom rooms to say, hey, this is what I found out from my students. This is what I shared and learn from their colleagues and then build from there. So, you know, as, as a teacher, you've got to know on those on those weekdays when you were getting ready to come back to school on Monday, if you had your plans already laid out, ready to go, you had less stress. If we can offer that that moment of offering teachers a first week or so of not being stressed out about what's going to happen in the very beginning of the school year, offer them that as a, as you know, like this is, we're going to help you through the first week or two. I don't care how we open these doors. You're going to be ready for this coming in next. All right. Um, you mentioned, you know, we don't know how we're going to open these doors. And one of the things that we do know about pandemics is they often come in waves. And as the economy begins to open up, there could be local flare ups. So some districts may have to shut down for certain times. If a second wave comes through, you may have full states and maybe even the whole country again has to shut down. What advice would you have for school leaders on how they can go about preparing for that sort of large scale shutdown again, if and when it does happen, so that we're not sort of caught in the same abrupt way that we had to, to get ready for it this time? Sure. Um, the simple answer is, you know, we have emergency preparedness plans that, that everyone's got for hurricanes, for, you know, everything up to, you know, some of the most tragic incidents. I think we now realize that we need one of these. Um, more importantly, I think what we realize is that the preparation for this is going back to the roots of how we design our classroom. So um, back to that, those questions of assessment, I think when teachers ask, one of the questions we're asking our teachers is, what tools have worked well for you? And I, when we say worked well, and we're guiding these questions very carefully, it's um, how much did it impact the learning the students did? And how long did it take them to use it? Because you could have the greatest tool in the world and it's, it's, it's not effective. So we're creating a, um, a repository of those things across the district. And this is, if, you, if the leaders have instructional coaches, this is, when their time, this is their time to shine. If they have those ready to go, this should be their, their moment where they are, the, they are either shown as the reason you asked your school boards for these people or the reason why, you know, they obviously weren't effective. They're going to shine. You're going to see how they shine either way because these people are on the, they're in the ground in the classes with the teachers doing that. And we want to pull out that information. Like here are the tools that worked and these are the tools that did not. And the reason it didn't work is it's not because the end result didn't get the kids better information, but it took them 45 minutes to figure it out. So one of the things you want to create is in your preparedness is here are the tools that work right off the bat. Have that sheet ready to go. Say, hey, I want to do a lesson on this topic. I want to, I want to be able to engage students. And, you know, here's a tool that, that our teachers in your district thought were very effective. Um, and make sure you have that ready to go. Make sure UDL framework has been reintroduced to everybody if it's not already uh, in front of them. And um, just increase that, that cycle of just be ready to say, from now on, we are no longer going to be a do it because we do it. We're going to be a how are we doing? How are we adapting? How are we assessing to make sure we know what we're doing is effective and make sure your targets are correct, that students are engaged, that they're healthy, that they're safe, that the, the content is being covered. Um, make sure your tools align, that document we said that the tools you're using make sense and that those techniques you're using align to those targets. You know, one of the questions we've asked our, our teachers is, how did our instructional model hold up in this environment? We knew how it was holding up in the other one. How did it hold up here? Did it do better? Did it do worse? Um, how are our competencies playing out in this environment? My sense is that people have been using competencies more and the learning target to lead to those competencies. This environment was not unbelievably challenging, but those teachers who push back over these last year or two um, are the ones that are probably gonna be struggling more. So that's another great, great form of assessment from a district perspective to say, hey, we need to do more help here. And these people are ready to fly. And now that we know this, how can we lead more cohorts of teachers that really flew in this situation, move them ahead another chess piece? And then those ones that are struggled, maneuver them left or right and figure out how we can, we can support them. All right, very good. Well, thank you much, Dan. So yeah. this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With. And today our with has been Dan Malott. Thank you, it was my pleasure.